All right, in this video, we're taking a look at the common ion effect on solubility of salts. Um, this is a topic in the solubility equilibrium unit for grade 12 chemistry. The effect, as we'll see in a little bit, is can be explained using Le Chatelier's principle. The common ion effect says that if you're trying to dissolve a salt in a solution that already contains a common ion with the salt, then the solubility is going to be lower than if you were trying to dissolve that same salt in pure water. Okay, we'll see what we mean by common ion in just a moment in this example. So we're going to compare the solubility of magnesium hydroxide. We're given its KSP value at 25 degrees Celsius. We're going to compare the solubility in pure water versus its solubility in a 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide solution. I know right away that this is a common ion effect question because the magnesium hydroxide that I'm trying to dissolve, it has a common ion with the sodium hydroxide, the solvent that I'm going to be using in a moment. They both have a hydroxide ion in common, so therefore this is a common ion effect question. So let's do the first part, the solubility of magnesium hydroxide in pure water. If you know what you're doing, go ahead and pause the video and try this yourself. So the magnesium hydroxide is a solid salt. It's going to dissociate in the water, producing magnesium ions, Mg2 positive, and two hydroxide ions and those are both aqueous. The magnesium hydroxide is a solid, so in my ice table I'm going to ignore it. In pure water, there is no magnesium ions initially, and the hydroxide ion concentration in pure water at 25 degrees, we know from our acid-base unit, is 1 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity. That's such a tiny number that we're going to go ahead and say that it's essentially zero. Now, as the magnesium hydroxide dissolves, the magnesium concentration will increase, and we'll say it increases by S, and then the hydroxide increases by twice as much, 2S. So in the saturated solution, at equilibrium, we have S and 2S, the concentrations of the two ions. We can now say that the KSP, or the salt solubility product constant, is equal to the concentration of the magnesium ion times the concentration of hydroxide squared, and that's going to equal, putting that algebra in, S times 2S squared, which gives me 4S cubed. So now if we want to find the solubility of the salt, we're just going to take the KSP and divide by 4, and then cube root it. So we'll take the cube root of the KSP, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12, and we'll divide that by 4. All right, so cube root, I'm using the calculator here, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12, divided by 4, and then the cube root of that answer is 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 molarity. So not surprisingly, the solubility of the salt is pretty small. It's not surprising because the KSP was small. So 1.1 times 10 to the minus 4 moles per liter is the solubility in pure water. So now let's go ahead and recalculate the solubility but this time not dissolving it in water, but dissolving it in 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. All right, so let's page. So we're going to start with the same equation and the same balance and same ice table, basically. So we have magnesium hydroxide solid. It's going to dissociate as it dissolves into magnesium 2 positive and 2 hydroxide ions. Those are aqueous. Solid we can ignore. 
There's no magnesium present initially in the 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. However, there is hydroxide iron present. The 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide has 0.1 molar sodium, but it also has 0.1 molar hydroxide. And that's what makes this a common ion effect question, because the hydroxide ion that's in the magnesium hydroxide was already present in the solution as we're trying to dissolve the magnesium hydroxide. We're going to see now what's the effect of that um, on the solubility. So now as the magnesium hydroxide dissolves, the magnesium will increase by S. The hydroxide, which had 0.1 molar concentration from sodium hydroxide, is going to increase as the magnesium hydroxide dissolves. So in the saturated solution, we'll have S, the concentration of magnesium, and we'll have 0.1 plus 2S, the concentration of hydroxide. So setting up our KSP expression, we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12, the KSP value, was equal to S times 0.1 plus 2S squared. Now when you look at that algebra, it's kind of daunting, because if you square that binomial, you're going to get a quadratic trinomial. And then when multiplied by the S, that'll lead to a cubic equation. So you definitely don't want to try to expand this because it's going to lead to an equation which is not sol soluble. Soluble. Solvable. <laughs> okay? So let's instead, if you have a graphing calculator, you could use your solver or we can use the assumption method. We can say since the KSP is small, we'll assume, in this case, that 2s is much less than 0.1. If I make that assumption, then I can ignore the 2s in that bracket. So we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 12 is equal to s times 0.1 squared. So now when you divide both sides by 0.1 squared, we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 is the solubility. Now normally, I would go and calculate a second uh, value. We would cycle that first approximation through and get a second S or a third S, but that is such a good answer. We assumed that 2S is much less than 0.1, and therefore we found that S is 10 to the minus 10. Well, 2 times that is definitely much less than 0.1. So I'm not even going to waste time calculating a second approximation. I'm just going to stop there. So notice this solubility, 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10 moles per liter, and compare that to the solubility that we had just a moment ago in, in pure water. The solubility in the pure water was 10 to the minus 4. So the solubility has dropped dramatically because of the presence of the common ion. And right there, you have the common ion effect. The solubility in a solution where there was already a common ion is much lower than the solubility in pure water. Now let's just very quickly explain why that is. The answer is Le Chatelier's principle. Okay? If you look at our balanced equation up above, We've added the 0.1 molar hydroxide. In the original question, when we were dissolving in water, there was no hydroxide initially. What does Le Chatelier's principle predict would be the effect of adding in that hydroxide from sodium hydroxide? Well, if we add hydroxide, the system's going to try to get rid of the extra hydroxide. To get rid of that hydroxide, the equilibrium would shift backwards towards the solid magnesium hydroxide. So the result is that the initial 0.1 molar hydroxide forces our solubility equilibrium backwards. So in the end, we don't find that as much salt has dissolved. The solubility is now 10 to the minus 10 instead of the 10 to the minus 4 that it was in pure water. So the presence of the common ion shifts the equilibrium back towards the salt, 
and you end up having less salt dissolved in the solution. So there's the common ion effect, so, uh, comparing the solubility of a salt in pure water to its solubility in a solution that already has an ion present.